Make the change, rearrange, and life seems strange. But you gotta keep your aim, stay focused on the game. Don't quit, quitters never win. Winning all begins when you begin to believe in yourself again. Yeah, ready for this Eduardo's Lounge. Hopefully, Eduardo is there. Are you there, Eduardo? Yes, I'm here. Eduardo, fantastic to see you, my friend. Uh, loving all your podcasts. Yeah, big round of applause. Eduardo has an amazing podcast series around the world. Uh, one of our founders, and I have to say that he's, he's always looking after us here at One Golden Nugget. So, Eduardo, uh, you have, um, we're slightly later than I thought, but you know what? We've got 15, 10, 15 minutes. Similar. I think we've got 15. You've got uh, some things planned. So can I hand you over? Ladies and gentlemen, it's Eduardo X. And, of course, uh, with Joe Foster, founder of Reebok. Thank you. I just want to say thank you, Steve Foster and Maxwell. This was amazing. Again, amazing, I would say. Uh, Mr. Joe Foster, the co-founder of Rebook, shares the same name as his grandfather, the founder of G.B. Foster and Sons, and pioneer of spiked running shoes. Joe is, al is also the author of Shoemaker, the untold story of the British family firm that became a global, global brand and also founding member of our amazing network, One Golden Nugget, Welcome to Eduardo's Lounge. What was the most difficult moment in your career and how did you handle it? And what did you learn from that experience? I mean, I enjoyed business and I enjoyed Reebok. We were in love with Reebok and certainly uh, that was my life. Now, when you say what was the most uh, difficult time, there were many. We had a lot of difficult times. But when you're together, Jeff and myself, we, we, we looked at uh, difficult decisions as where can we get an advantage? You know, we lost our initial name, Mercury, and we had to find another one. And we found a better name. We found Reebok. Um, we had a letter from Adidas after being four years in the business. And Adidas thought that our silhouette of two, two stripes and a T-bar infringed the three stripes. We were delighted. We were delighted. All of a sudden, the biggest sports brand in the world had recognized us. Okay, they, they didn't like what we were doing, but that was brilliant. We had made our mark. So we changed our silhouette. And, and the thing is that there were so many, um, so many problems. A distributor, I had a distributor for the UK so I could look at the rest of the world and they went out of business, owing a lot of money. And that was a big problem. But we, we just get the shoes back. Let's sell the shoes a different way. So really, these downsides are, are problems. And every problem really is a lesson. And not only do you learn from that, you learn how to turn that problem into an advantage. So you have to leap out of it. Um, what was the biggest one? Possibly when my brother, when we just just got to America, I had just got the agreement on the one that was to really make Reebok really big. And my brother, unfortunately, he contracted cancer and he died. So I had lost my partner. There was good for that and there was bad for that. Because we were 50-50, all of a sudden I was 100%. And so my decision then counted. I didn't have to... Jeff was no problem, but we had wives and we had four people, always a discussion, why are you doing this? Why are you going to America? Yeah, these, these were things that are difficult to, uh, to sort of work with when you, when you have a family. All of a sudden, that was gone because Jeff had died. The tragedy. I just wish he was here again today. But that tragedy helped in many ways take the company because I made decisions. And fortunately, they worked, but there were risks, there were gambles. The, the family didn't like gambling. The family didn't like that risk, but that freed me to do it. And we ended up with, with Reebok. I just lo would love him to be here today to see where we, where we uh, ended. Where we ended as the number one global brand. But, you know, 31 years before I, from starting to leaving the business, you don't go through 31 years every day being a great day. Lots of days are difficult. Lots of things challenge you. But I think it's how you face that challenge and how you really sort of build from that challenge. It makes you stronger. 
and I, and I think that uh, all those many challenges, they, that's what you are as an entrepreneur, uh, as a person with vision, you, you have to overcome and you have to look at them as a lesson. And that for me is really the big thing. It resonates so much with what you just told me because my mother passed away when I was quite young, so she never experienced to to see like what the career that I did later on in life, right? And she and my grandmother, they always told me this nugget. And my grandmother told me this nugget that when I complained about something that happened in my entrepreneur journey, because she she, she saw when I when I rose I, in my career, right? She said that my son, she said. The, the negative will always happen. What is important that you leave them aside and start to look at the positive, she said, because the next negative will come around yeah. the corner, she said. Yes, well, you, you're absolutely right. And I, I think that's something, you know, it's in your DNA. You, you have that mentally, that yes, we, you, we're bound to get some negatives. But if, if you're a positive person, if you're an entrepreneur, you know very well you have to overcome it. You have to, and you do, because you, you don't look at it as something which is defeating you. You just look at it as a challenge. And the more challenges you get, the better you are to face the next challenge. And that's how you grow. And you need, for me, a lot of luck, being there at the right time, seeing those opportunities. Don't let them pass you by. This is, this is where the entrepreneur, the, the progressive person, the person who is an optimist, can see the bad times. No, we expect those, but we can get through it. And let's learn. Let's grow from it. And, yeah, I mean, I, I just agree with you. It, it is unfortunate. My father died before we actually became as big as Reebok became. And my brother died before that. And that is... A bit of a sadness that I, I know you carry and I know I carry that uh, uh, the people that mean and meant such a lot to you didn't really see the success uh, and where it, where it ended. But again, you know, that is life. That is what happens in life. And it's something we have to overcome and carry on and, and just understand that you know, if you did it, you've got a, an inner strength. Uh, and that's really good. Thank you, sir. That it put all together, I would say, for the life that we choose to live. That is what I, I call ourselves the passionate ones, actually. Yeah. I, I don't use the expression entrepreneur anymore. It's, it's, I say, like, we live our passion to the fullest extent, I would say, with whatever it comes on, in our way. I think so, yes. Passion, you have to have the passion, you have to have the vision, and you have to have that determination to keep on going. You just have to do it. What is the most significant moment you're proud of in your career? There are a number, but I think, I think the one is to, uh, when we got into the American market, when we got our five stars from Runner's World, we needed that hook to get into the American market. It's a big market, and you have to get somewhere. Runner's World was the biggest influence in running throughout the whole all of America. Everybody followed Runner's World. And they were rating shoes. And if you got a five-star rating, it meant that you were into the market. So when our Aztec in 1979, uh, we got our uh, five-star rating, that was the big time. That was the hook. That brought us into the, the market. And it wasn't luck. We worked for that. We worked hard to get that five-star rating. So that was the big time for us. A bigger time was the aerobics but we wouldn't have been in the aerobics had we not started with the running. So running, again, that five-star in runner's world, that was a big, the big break for us. And reflecting back on your life, what is the most important learning you would like to share with future entrepreneurs? Well, I, I think it's self-belief. I think you've got to believe in yourself because a lot of people, if you ask for advice, the advice can never tell you what you yourself have in your mind and your dream. You know, the, the advice may help you to just guide a bit, but believe in yourself. I think the most important thing is to believe that what you're doing is right. 
And, and if you can do that, you will succeed. So uh, I think it's, uh, it's so important what we're doing here because I remember a lot of time in my career, I felt so alone. You know, I had nobody to talk to. I didn't want to come home to, to my partner and tell her everything I was experienced. Like we lost our biggest client, all the things that happens to us in the ride that we choose to live our passion, right? So I think it's so important uh, what we're creating with One Golden Nugget to be this place where we can talk and share these experiences because I truly believe that the, wo the walk of the passionate life we embark on will have so many obstacles. And it's so important that we can talk to each other and empower each other because it means a lot to me. So I, I really value everybody's time coming here today. Thank you, Mr. Joe Foster. Thank all the founding members, uh, Maxwell, Steve, for put, putting this together. Thank you so much. Make the change, rearrange, and life seems strange But you gotta keep your aim, stay focused on the game Don't quit, quitters never win When it all begins, when you begin to believe in yourself again Yeah, ready for our aim, gotta get